our program is uh, under Petkosi Lerubik, and um, what we do at Petkosi Lerubik is uh, run cultural, Inuit cultural programs. Um, the Inuit cultural programs include tool making, various Inuit tools, uh, such as snow knives or panas, uh, scrapers. Um, we have diluk duties, which are to clean, uh, for cleaning caribou skins. Um, we've had caribou skin preparations. We've had nipku making, which is drying caribou meat. Um, so uh, different parts of Inuit life is what we try to to run in our program. Yeah. And this is for the caribou Inuit. It will be specific because we're inland Inuit. The age groups that we're allowed to have come in as students are 18 and over, and there's no upper limit. So no, it, it could be 76 and still take the program. And we've had people who are who are like in their 60s come in and do one of our um, the hair and caribou skins. Yeah, so we run both. Um, right now, we're running a tool making program. Uh, usually that's male, um, 18 and over, and as long as they're um, part of the Nunavut, uh, Nunavut they are Nunavut beneficiary, then uh, we'll accept them. Um, and as long as they're 18 or over, um, and you know we've had females taking tool making. Um, we've had caribou skin preparation, um, caribou de-herring, and usually that's all female and, and done in the summertime. Yeah. Our programs usually have been running um, starting in the fall. Um, we've had uh, different, different types of programs. One was making drums. Um, another was setting, learning how to set nets through the ice. Um, how to chop ice so that you could bake a hole through the ice uh, using chisel and scoop. Um, how to set the fish nets through the ice. Um, how to fix the nets when they're having, if there's holes in the nets that are too big. Um, fixing to, uh, chisels and scoops. Um, also the snow knives, spinners, scrapers that women use. Um, and uh, fox trapping. We've also done fox trapping. So when they have snow knives, they could go out now and um, do igloo building. So they learn how to build igloos and shelters um, when they're out on the land. Um, and in the summertime, we've had um, In the summertime, we've had um, caribou de-herring, which is so that they are able to have uh, uh, caribou leather that they could use for summer wear. Um, so comics that are de-haired um, car car with caribou leather. Um, we've had uh, one where they made um, dog bags that they keep for carrying, for dogs that carry uh, you know, different things when they're traveling in the summertime by walking. So the dogs help to carry some of the things when they're traveling. So we've had, we have a dog bag that was made. And we've also had uh, caribou skin clothing made. Um, usually they make gummies and mitts, um, but we've had caribou parkas made and one lady who made caribou pants. So, um, those are the kinds of things that we've had run in our program. The program is to try to encourage young people to learn about their culture, um, who, who, who they are, where they come from. Um, we've talked about maybe having some elders come in and talk to the students as well about, um, you know, how they used to live out on the land and, you know, how they tried to survive and what kinds of things they did to to catch caribou at different times of the year, um, what kind of caribou is good at certain times of the year, uh, that sort of thing. And also box trapping, which allows them to earn a little bit of money. Um, and some 
who have gone through our programs are able to make ulus and scrapers to sell. So they make some money that way as well. The instructors that we hire usually uh, speak Inuktitut uh, fluently. Um, so they, when they teach, they teach in Inuktitut mostly. Um, they're able to speak English, uh, but feel more comfortable speaking in Inuktitut. Um, and uh, what they do is, um, I think uh, those young people who have gone through our programs uh, begin to understand, you know, how much of a difficult life Inuit had before they settled into communities. And, you know, I think they, they get an idea of how they could carry on in this life uh, in, in the future for themselves. You know, they have an idea of how they could make a little bit of money um, not just through their school systems, but through their own knowledge about their own culture. Yeah, the objective is basically is to try to uh, retain or keep Inuit culture. Um, that is basically the objective, is because so many young people don't know about their own culture anymore. Um, so the idea is to bring back the culture to the lives of young people here so that you know, they begin to understand where they come from, who they are, um, and uh, you know, through the through the tool making, through the caribou skin preparation, and you know, we've done some uh, uh, caribou fall hunts. Um, you know, caching caribou in the fall, um, and uh, picking up caribou in the winter, um, but. Uh, We've even gone as far as going out fishing and, and picking up trees from the tree line. We did that a couple of years ago. I'm not sure if there's a, a real way of measuring that, but I think um, one of the things that we, um, the, how we measure is that the individuals are able to make the tools, uh, like they'll make the ulus, they'll make scrapers. They're able to build an igloo. Um, they know how to set a trap and clean the fox skins. Um, and if they catch any other animals and they learn how to clean those. Um, but one of the things that we've encouraged in the program is to tell them about the Clyde River program, which is where our headquarters is. Uh, because a little big headquarters is in Clyde River and they have all forms of uh, Inuit culture taught there. So sea life, uh, the medicinal parts of Inuit tradition, um, the language, um, different ways of preparation of skins, uh, Inuit song and dance, um, legends, stories, the string games, the different games that Inuit played. Um, so they have a much wider uh, uh, learning experience when they go to Clyde River. Um, and that's where our main school is for our cultural program. You know, they begin to uh, feel comfortable about being out on the land, uh, either by themselves or with a group of people. Um, they um, are comfortable, uh, you know, going out to Clyde River. That that's uh, I think one of the main ideas of uh, the programs that we have have in this community in Baker Lake. Uh, there's another position in Iglulik, and there's only two of us. Um, we don't actually do the teaching, but we hire uh, instructors and we try to find the students for the programs. Um, so I, the way the way that I've been trying to measure is, you know, the individuals are able to make some tools that they could use at home, um, uh, or they've learned how to cash caribou in the fall, uh, how to skin the caribou in preparation for caching. Um, and the caribou, caribou skin sewing has been, you know, when they're able to make gummies or they're able to make mitts. Um, and some have gone as far as making caribou parkas. Um, so it's when they're able to, to do these things that we, I think that we have succeeded. Oh, usually um, our, our ratio is, uh, one teacher, three students. Uh, so it's a very low ratio. Um, just so that the opportunity for the students to be able to have a one-on-one -on -one 
um, learning experience with the instructor. So it's 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 been a very low turnout usually, um, but you know we like that because then the students are able to have one on one with the instructor. Um, when we go out on the land doing the fall hunt, it it may be a higher ratio, um, you know, with one instructor to four or five. Um, but then you know they're also helping each other and learning to work with each other, um, and that's the idea of of what we do when we go out, when we take them out in our land in the fall. At this point, we don't have an evaluation system. There is one when they go to Clyde River. Um, they have a full range of uh, courses that they work in the classroom. Uh, they have different elders from across Nunavut that come in. Um, and also they have a land, land portion. Um, when the days are nice out, they go out in the land. Um, and then they have an evalu a form of evaluating the students when they, um, when they complete the programs there. But here in the community, we have no, no real evaluation form other than, you know, to see whether the students are able to finish tools, making tools, um, or have a funnel when they leave, a snow knife when they leave. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the ladies usually, uh, when they, uh, have completed the caribou skin comics or mitts and that sort of thing. But those are the only real ways of we could sort of evaluate whether the students have uh, learned anything. You know, I think I, I'd like to see more young people come in and take part. Um, you know, a lot of times the young people are coming in because they see, oh, we, see, we can receive an allowance of, you know, so, so certain amount in a day sort of thing, but, you know, we'd like to um, eventually create a camp where young people would be able to go out to the camp, like cabins out on the land somewhere, where they're able to actually experience being out there and learning how to uh, build igloos and do the fox trapping out there rather than in the community. Um, and in the summertime, if we could do it, uh, you know, having canoes and learning how to handle canoes, um, maybe even kayaks, if we could get the kayaks, um, which is a, tra uh, a traditional Inuit way of travel um, and hunting. So um, these are things that we'd like to see maybe in the future, but, you know, how far along that will go, I don't know at this time. Yeah. Um, but that's about probably the only thing I'd like to add, you know, because right now we're just doing everything here in the community and in the, in the college and going on day trips or afternoon trips or something like that. But really, they're not spending enough time out on the land, which was what I'd like to see happen.